Finally, some good news on energy. Britain is removing its ban on fracking. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. With the prospect of a dreadful winter, Britain's new prime minister, Liz Truss, is showing the way for a brighter energy future. Unlike just about every government in the developed world, she wants to encourage, not discourage, production of oil and gas. Hence, she's ending the national ban on fracking. She also announced a new round of licensing for North Sea oil and gas production. She is boldly breaking the disastrous superstitions that have hobbled energy production for over a generation. The prime minister is right about the promise of fracking. In the U.S., within a generation, it has added at least five times more energy supply than renewables. Putin's slashing deliveries of oil and gas is the proximate cause for the coming misery this winter. But the roots of this calamity go back two decades, when numerous governments of advanced economies went whole hog to replace fossil fuels with renewables, primarily windmills and solar panels. It was one of the most costly and ill-conceived endeavors ever. It sharply raised electricity costs. In Germany, they more than doubled. In the last 20 years, $5 $5 trillion worldwide has been spent on renewables, yet the global share of hydrocarbons for energy has dropped from 86% to 84%, 2% for $5 trillion. Amazingly, no one did the homework of figuring out what was actually involved in replacing fossil fuels with alternative energy sources, nor did they factor in what would happen if the sun didn't shine or the winds didn't blow. Energy expert Mark P. Mills lays out the inconvenient truths in a piece entitled The Energy Transition Delusion, Reality Reset. To operate 24-7, modern electricity grids need backup sources for surges in demand. In the U.S., too much storage is the norm. Much of Europe had no such contingencies. Emissions went up as countries had to resort to those hated coal plants. If we went to renewables, the battery storage needed to match what we now have with traditional power plants would cost $100 trillion, which is more than four times the size of the U.S. economy. The horrific amount of new mining needed to get the minerals for renewables is staggering. For instance, 4,200% more for lithium, 2,500% more for graphite, and 1,900% more for nickel. By the way, numerous needed minerals are controlled by China and Russia. Here's an inconvenient truth. The need for more energy is going to grow as never before. In the U.S., there are almost as many vehicles as people. Globally, the ratio is only 1 in 20. As countries grow, the current economic crisis is not going to last forever. That ratio will eventually match ours. Our gargantuan devourer of energy is high tech. Today, as Mills points out, quote, the global cloud uses twice as much energy than the entire nation of Japan, end quote. Renewables will be additive to the world energy supply. They are not a replacement for fossil fuels. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.